Hi, it's Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com, where we instantly improve the lives for families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can make informed decisions, have peace of mind, real power, real control, and so that you can influence decision making fast, even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another question. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered. And in last week's episode, I answered another question from one of my clients. And the question last week was part four of a case study. My dad's been in ICU for several weeks with ARDS, cardiac arrest, and dialysis. He's got a tracheostomy. Does he have a realistic chance of survival? And again, that was part four in this series of questions. You can also check out last week's episode by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I want to answer the next question from one of my clients, Emma, which are excerpts from one-on-one -on -one phone and email counseling and consulting sessions with me. And the question this week is part one of a case of another case study. And the name of the case study this week is my sister is in intensive care on a balloon pump and ventilated after a heart attack. The ICU doctors want to stop treatment against our wishes and let her die. What should we do? And again, that's part one in a new series of questions from one of my clients. So Emma writes, hi, Patrick, my 56 year old sister had a bleed at the balloon pump insertion site and has an infection at the site also. She has had an aortic valve replacement for severe aortic stenosis about a week ago. They told us she has a very weak heart, which is why they needed to insert the balloon pump after the surgery. She's also in an induced coma on sedation, needing ventilation and a breathing tube. The doctors had to remove the balloon pump and she survived the surgery to remove the balloon pump and repair the side with the bleed. My sister is also diabetic and is now in acute kidney failure and on the dialysis machine. They have advised us that she will not survive long without the balloon pump. The doctor whom had initially told us that he would do the surgery if my sister was able to walk with physical therapy during the family meeting stated that he never told us that and that he had no intention of doing her surgery and that my family could ask the doctor at any other hospital to perform the much needed surgery. They said that if we can't find another doctor doing the surgery, they said that they will stop life support and she will die. Please help. Thank you from Emma. So here is my response. Hi, Emma. Thank you for making contact and thank you for using my one on one phone and email counseling, consulting and advocacy service. I very much appreciate it. It sounds like your sister and your family are in a very difficult situation. With a weak heart after an aortic valve replacement and needing the balloon pump, also known as IABP, by the way, it shows that the surgery has most likely only been partially successful or that the heart had already been so weak that the, that the surgery hasn't made an improvement yet. Being diabetic and a weak heart that already needs support from the balloon pump, the chances were pretty high to begin with that she would go into kidney failure needing the dialysis to support her failing kidneys. The reasons for going into kidney failure were so high were so high are simply the diabetes to begin with, as well as a weakened heart, not pumping enough blood to support the kidneys. Especially acute kidney failure is often temporary and most patients can successfully come off the dialysis machine, reinstating normal kidney function. Furthermore, with the intraortic balloon pump supporting the weak heart, your sister would also be on other mechanisms of life support besides the ventilation, the balloon pump and the breathing tube. She would also need inotropes or vasopressors, namely 
epinephrine, norepinephrine, or dibutamine. Sometimes they may also use milrinone or levocimendin as well as vasopressin to support poor heart function. The goal for your sister for now would have been as follows in order to stabilize with the balloon pump or the IABP, which stands for intraortic balloon pump, which basically means the balloon sits right in front of the heart to support oxygenation of the heart. So the goals for your sister for now would be number one, to wean down the balloon pump from a one to one ratio to a one to three ratio and then take it off completely. Once the balloon has been removed, then the vasopressors or the inotropes need to be reduced. If that can be achieved, it's a sign that the heart is recovering. In your sister, situ your sister situation is unique because they had to remove the balloon pump because of the bleeding almost in an emergency. Therefore, chances are that the vasopressor or inotrope requirements will be going up significantly in order to make up for the loss of the balloon pump supporting the heart. Inotropes or vasopressors as well as the balloon pump and mechanical ventilation are all real life support mechanisms. Therefore your sister is being kept alive by life support mechanisms for now. This is not a good sign to begin with that they had to take out the balloon pump or the IABP and it's also not a good sign that your sister had to go on the balloon pump to begin with after the cardiac surgery. It confirms to me that the heart is very weak. One of your next step, steps is to look at whether ECMO is an option, especially in view of the doctors commenting about your sister may, maybe not surviving this ordeal. ECMO is basically a bypass machine that patients can be put on to to replace the heart or the lung function for a period of time to let either organ give the chance to recover. We have more information about ECMO on our website and I put a link below this video in the written version of this blog where you can have a look what ECMO really means. And if you are watching this on YouTube, just click on the link below the video that'll get you to our website and to our other free resources. You should also have a look at ECMO centers in your area. And again, I'll put a link below this video. You can have a look at ECMO centers in your area. So looking, looking ahead and, and moving forward, Emma, the next steps for you are, number one, ask the ICU doctors not to remove life support, for example, ventilation and the inotropes, especially against your wishes. Number two, ask for ECMO and the options around it. For example, transfer to another hospital or another ICU within Houston area where ECMO might be available. Number three, if they are adamant in wanting to remove life support, ask for their policy about withdrawal of life support because there is a very high chance that the policy will not allow them to withdraw life support without your consent. Number four, ask what your sister's ejection fraction, also known as EF, is. That will give us an indication how weak or how strong the heart really is. If the heart is really weak, I can see why no other surgeon will do the surgery because of the risk attached to it. If that's the case, then once again, ECMO or also LVAD and potentially a heart transplant are your next options, and I will guide you with that what to do in our next phone call. For now, make sure that the intensive care team knows that you will not give up lightly and that you will stand up and advocate for your sister. All the best from Patrick. So here is Emma's response. Emma writes, Hi Patrick, I met with the head of the ICU yesterday and it turns out this hospital do have ECMO. The doctor said due to it being an emergency, they placed the balloon pump or the IABP in the first place. I followed your advice and asked about the ECMO and the doctor is unwilling to place my sister on ECMO at this point. The doctor said because they are refusing due to her surgery because of the aortic stenosis and the quality of life, 
she will have if the surgery was done. This doctor also said that I could call around myself and find a doctor who's willing to perform her much needed surgery. And he doubted that any doctor would agree to perform my sister's surgery. I asked him not to remove her from life support and he got very upset with me and advised me to read an article pertaining to life support. I, in turn, responded to him stating that I was not interested in any article, but I would like a copy of the hospital withdrawal of treatment policies as you advised. The doctor got very upset with me and I took your advice and used the term murder. My sister is still on the life support. Her nurse said that she has been weaned off two out of the five blood pressure medications. Now her blood pressure has been 100 over 40 and that they will try to wake her up in the morning from the sedation. Not sure what all of that means. Please explain. Thank you from Emma. Now, and if, if you have come thus far, and before I go into my response, if you have come thus far, have a look if you want one-on-one -on -one counseling, consulting and advocacy with me. If you want that, click on the link on the top of the website where it says counseling and consulting and choose from the options that work best for you. So here is my response. Hi, Emma. I have just tried to call you, but I was unable to get through, so I left a message for you. First of all, well done for standing up for what you want and for fighting for your sister. Take it as a compliment that the doctor was upset because 99% of the families in intensive care do not question and they do not challenge the intensive care team. So give yourself a pat on your back for being so strong. Very well done. So what does it all mean? It means that if they have ECMO available, they haven't been transparent with you from the start, because ECMO can be used as a bridge to a heart transplant, especially if they are unwilling to do the aortic valve replacement. ECMO could also be used to let your sister's heart recover from the weakness and recover some of the strength. Sometimes ECMO can be used to go to an LVAT and then a heart transplant. In your sister's situation, it sounds like she's been placed on the balloon pump or IABP to buy time to begin with. And as I said in our phone call, ECMO is nowadays being used more and more often instead of the balloon pump. Also, good for you that you've asked for this policy about withdrawal of treatment. He surely wasn't expecting that. Have you received that policy? If you haven't received it, please ask with a deadline. For example, you want to have the policy by 3 p.m. tomorrow or whichever other deadline you choose. But it is important working with deadlines going forward. Also, remember, when the intensive care team is referring to quality of life, remember, this is a perception they're talking about and it's entirely up to the individual patient and their family and it's not up to the intensive care team to judge what quality of life might be acceptable going forward. It's a decision you and your family need to make. What quality of life is acceptable to you and to your sister and don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. Intensive care teams have no understanding what the quality of a patient might look like after they survived intensive care. Keep that in mind at all times. It's good to hear that they have managed to wean her off some of the inotropes and vasopressors, that's a good sign, especially if she can hold a blood pressure of about 100 over 40. Please also ask if her kidneys are working, as this may sometimes happen that the kidneys are failing temporarily. Overall, I think for now you have achieved your goal to get your sister through the next 24 hours, and that should be your next goal to get your sister through the next 24 hours again, and then repeat that cycle. Give me a call anytime and we can look into the situation further. Best wishes. Also, look out for the next for the next episode in this series of questions with my client Emma. It'll come out in the next few days. So, how can you become the best advocate for your critically ill loved one? 
How can you make informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power, and influence quickly whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care? You will get to that all important feeling of making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power, and influence when you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you learn quickly how to make informed decisions, get peace of mind, real power, and real control, and how you can influence decision-making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free instant impact report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what is really happening in intensive care. In your free report, you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions. Discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five mind-blowing tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You will get real-world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one's situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You will get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what is really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's Your Questions Answered episode and I will see you again next week in another update. Make sure you will also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies or simply send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Or you can call me, find international phone numbers on our contacts tab. Also, check out our ebook section where you get more ebooks, videos, and audio recordings and where you can also get one-on-one -on -one counseling and consulting with me via Skype over the phone or via email by clicking on the products tab. This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another update.